Season 5 group stage. we got four best of ones coming your way this evening. The first of which is Summoner's Rift versus Pain Gaming. I am Marge. Please, your resident Canadian Dota 2 caster with me Ten is the one, the only Gerg himself. What is hip TV? Gerg, how you doing this Five evening? Seconds remaining. I'm on a struggle bus, man. I'm struggling. <laughs> I had a long night Reserve last night time. uh for some reason and okay. uh yeah it was rough but I'm I'm ready to I haven't cast some I haven't cast Dota in quite a while to be honest and uh looking forward to getting down to my hat my the hat of my country's roots <laughs> Canada up on the east coast we have uh, quite a few rough nights but nonetheless 10 years since Gerg Strim and you guys have the privilege of seeing it I'm really excited personally to cast BSJ I'm a big fan of his stream and his play and it's the first time I've actually been able to cast one of his official games so looking forward to that yeah it should be interesting I think these uh these two teams I was Glancing Dyer around team picks. at uh, Dota Buff, checking out some mm. of the recent picks. And I think you obviously have to favor Summer's Rift here coming in. They have had some tough losses recently. Yeah. Uh, in, again, I League, they lost to Team Tinker. There is uh, a lot of really unfortunate stuff with, uh, you know, mm. internet connection. I, and I've been told there's actually just an internet connectivity problem, not even DDoS, because uh, a lot of the players at this point, you know, this was a huge problem for a really long time. But I think a, a lot of players at this remember. point have actually re realized that they Storm need to get their shit Street. together and are actually mostly protected. Now, Radiant so. team. I don't know. I, I'm interested to see how this game plays out, though. I think Stop pretty that. easy to favor Summer's Rift. PSJ has been a real monster lately on, yeah. uh, team you know, a couple couple of his e heroes, and I'm looking. I don't look. I don't know. I just like watching him play. He's uh he's he plays very efficiently. Me as well, and I feel like he's Dyer really proficient on back. Slark and kind of this Phoenix or this Triumph oh, Protector yeah. pick from Pain almost opens that up for him. So look for them to ban that in this phase. Uh, if they don't, they're certainly in a little Radiant bit of danger. Team. Very mobile hero can get into the face of the sniper, especially along with the toolkit provided by that Storm Spirit. So I worry a bit for Pain Gaming if they haven't done their homework here. Pain is the epitome of Dota in Brazil right now, so they definitely can put up a good show. But as you mentioned, Summoner's Rift should Ten certainly be favored here. Pain Gaming, unfortunately for them, lost a best of five just the other week in uh, South back. American Challenge to Union Gaming. So hopefully they can pick their socks up here. First game of four tonight. It's going to be the complete round robin in Group A for your Season 5 of the D2CC. Yeah, one of the things I really like Radiant about this tournament, the format is really easy to understand. It's scheduled in a way that makes it pretty easy to actually follow what's going on, which uh i i really like it as a caster <laughs> i can definitely appreciate it you know the groups are pretty consolidated it's pretty nice um but you know this this time around ten thousand dollars is at stake so quite a big prize pool growing steadily every season when uh you know myself and mott from high ground tv have been casting this tournament yeah for quite a long time so it's nice to be back, be it, back it, again it for, really for has been Dota. growing for sure and it's nice to see yeah, that our I mean, scene we, i think is getting po it's, more and more popular and and obviously yeah. you guys are honorary canadians at this point for all your contribution yeah, welcome with open arms <laughs> I, i'm interested to see how this draft actually plays out here uh banana slam Gemma, i think his hero pool is pretty limited i mean in my mind there's only a couple of heroes he's really really top notch with uh yeah. I mean, like Jug, all Slark, three are banned. Jug, Troll. Troll, Slark, right there. So Pain seemingly yeah, I, have I mean, done their know. homework. Yeah, yeah. They also Wisp, which is a, a really a favorite, honestly, um, for the for Summer's Rift. I keep wanting to call them Summer's Rift, and it's not that. I'm just gonna get yelled at. But I mean, they've definitely done their homework here. They know that these are some of their most played heroes, and yeah, uh, interested to see how this Phoenix actually works out for them, though. Yeah, certainly so. Um, it's it's really kind of a feast or famine hero. I feel like he's one of the offlaners that at least has an escape, which is nice to him. So he can look to soak XP pretty aggressively early, and that's certainly nice. The tick damage is good against the living armor as well. I feel like the one hero pain maybe haven't banned from BSJ currently is the PL. Uh, maybe he's able to grab that up for Champions of Summer's Rift. I mean, they backed themselves into a corner with that name. I want to say Summoner's Rift as well, but they're going to uh, look to supplement with some physical damage here that they were lacking a little bit earlier. Uh, Witch Doctor, interesting pickup into Sniper, I fear, for his ability to stay in the back lines, but if he positions himself well, yeah. the extra sustain and the Death Ward should do a lot of work. 
I have to imagine that Summers Rift are going to be looking to pick up some pretty hard CC in those these last two picks. Mm -hmm. um, it'll help them a little bit in these team fights to help the Witch Doctor. I mean, if they have a good initiation, uh, their team fight ability is pretty unreal. I mean, you have the Supernova. Storm Spirit has really good initiation versus the Sniper. I was a little surprised to see the Sniper picked into the Storm Spirit, but I think Sniper is just so powerful that, you know, yeah. it's worth, like, the risk. You just have to prioritize the BKB, be really careful in the mid game. I mean, in the mid game, Storm can solo kill you really, really easily. So Lion. that's a huge issue for them. Lion will definitely help with that. So they'll have the Hex. They'll be able to Hex the Storm Spirit. Mm -hmm. uh, he should, no matter what, be able to get the pull off because you can do the pull while you're actually balling. So, yeah. Um, I'm kind of interested to see exactly how these fights are going to play out here because pain gaming obviously they have the tight hunter They have the train protector two huge aoe abilities to control the fight So mm -hmm. Witch doctor, I mean, I think he's gonna have his work cut out for him actually getting a good death ward here And I do kind of like the Phoenix. I mean you can imagine a world where like there's a ravage and Phoenix like moves in and makes something happen with supernova or uh, you know the fire spirits so uh, this, this is shaping up to be an interesting uh, game, yeah. at least in terms of fights. There's Same a lot of possibility well. to dodge these ultimates, too. Like you mentioned, the Supernova is there. The Ball Lightning can dodge a Ravage if, if uh, timed correctly. And I feel like Pain is really strong in lane with these Treant-Lion combo. But uh, to the contrary, Champions of Summer's Rift look a little bit greedy with their support duo. The one thing uh, Storm Spirit is notorious for is being weak in lane early on. And without anything like an Earthshaker to posture up behind him defensively, I do work worry for his ability i mean once he picks up level six no problem for this storm spirit but look for him maybe to retreat into the jungle pick up a couple of stacks which may slow down the sand king so i feel like a little bit of greed from summer's rift side coming out but with the frontliners like the storm and the phoenix um witch doctor and sand king should be able to get some big ultimates of their own off it seems like it's going to be a sort of a battle of initiations, mm -hmm. uh, and we'll have to see exactly how it works out, man. Pain Gaming are they? I think they've done a really good job here concentrating these bands. Yeah, and uh, it's, it has left Summer's Rift here in kind of a weird situation. I mean, definitely left is BSJ's hero. Uh, Brax plays Storm Spirit all the time, so definitely going to be his hero. And uh, I'm interested to see what they do here because I think we're they might be a little pushed a little bit out of their comfort zone with this last pick and. Potentially, this this could be uh, this could be rough for them. I mean, mm -hmm. I don't know. if they're if they're really not watching they're gonna, this stream, they're, uh, they're watching BSJs because they literally spent four of their bans on all the heroes that we mentioned. He's good on, so uh, good on them. Yeah. Uh, Anti Mage going to be banned from Summer's Rift themselves. Maybe they're going for something like a Medusa. Doesn't seem like a BSJ hero. Void, I think at Void all. could be an option here. Mm -hmm. Vo yeah. uh, Faces Void seems okay. I mean, yeah. that's definitely one hero that he does sometimes play. Uh, looking at his other heroes that he plays, I mean, or he sometimes plays Ursa. I don't know if this is an Ursa game. Mm. It can be a little bit rough against the sniper entry uh, as just well. Because, yeah, it just makes it's really it's really easy to get kited against those heroes. Plus, the lion can be very very annoying. Um, yeah, BKB but, yeah. carriers are not going to be super appealing for Summer's Rift just because of that overgrowth being there, and as you alluded to, the ability to kite around with all this disable from the lion and even the ravage. From the tide so it's a little odd and i mean medusa seems pretty good here but it just doesn't seem like a bsj hero it's not really aggressive enough and there's not enough physical damage in their lineup to be able to buff up with that stone gaze yeah i think medusa is kind of an interesting one here i mean it could be a possibility mm -hmm. the mana drain can be a little bit annoying for that but it doesn't drain your mana at quite a ridiculous rate i mean yeah i don't know plus you have to turn towards the the hero to do it so you just click your r button and well, then he's stuck. But mm. Luna I don't know. I, I'm interested to see. I'm interested to see what, how they do this here. I mean, they have they have a long time to think about it. I think they'll probably spend a bunch of time. Uh, other thing we did want to mention: there is an in-game ticket, and that does contribute to the prize pool, 12.5 percent. So right now we're at over uh, over 11,000 in the prize pool. So. Yeah, a lot of a lot of good tier 1.5 and 2 competition. It's some really well matched up groups here. Group A particularly strong, so look for some good ones tonight. Uh, group D seems like maybe one of the weaker ones, but still good teams up in that one. And second time today, we're going to see a Huskar pick. First time was NIP versus Cloud9 and Red Bull Battlegrounds, and the NIP lost that one. What are your thoughts on the Huskar pick here? Oscar seems okay in this game as long as they can keep the sniper under control. Mm -hmm. I mean, Luna does not have a, a lot of physical damage till much later into the game, and I think Summer's Rift are going to be looking to end the game by then. Yeah. And uh, I mean, as long as they have good initiation on the sniper, exactly. Oscar is going to be able to go ham.
I, I feel like that but is. Although the, I do have to say, Trian actually could just trust and kill him. That would be mm -hmm. that might happen. <laughs> yeah, for sure. I mean, I feel like you touched upon it, and the linchpin to this summer's Rift lineup is going to be initiating on this sniper. If he's able to right click from the back lines, Huskar stands no chance. Uh, so if, they, but they have, a, I mean, a lot of tools to do it. They've got the Icarus dive, probably a Blink Burl strike at some point. Of course, the Storm Spirit, and even the Life Break. So maybe some of it uh, rests on four DRs, Luna to be able to kind of counter initiate for this sniper but either way i don't mind the huskar pick in this one yeah i don't i'm not a huskar believer personally but yeah. <laughs> maybe he will make me one bsj is certainly capable of doing so he's run this in his stream in the past week as well so it's something i feel like he's been practicing he goes boots first usually let's see his items he has opted for boots first uh, on the Huskar. It's a little interesting from him. Yeah. Usually you see a little extra strength, but he just uses it to get the Burning Spears off, reliably be able to zone out the offlaners. He's a big fan of heroes like the Jug, who can pick up phase boots and just zone the crap out of the offlaner. So look for him to yeah, do that pretty like, early. You know, troll, mm -hmm. stuff like that. Yeah. I definitely agree with you. And I I mean, the Huskar, there are a couple of good things here about the Huskar. Uh, our stats man is in the broadcast, Knox, Knoxville this time around, not Mott Packs, who. <laughs> Unfortunately, does have a life outside of Dota Pit and uh, yeah, Dan's stats, game. So he's not. He can't be here all the time. Dan's game, but, mod. Uh, he, where are you? But Knoxville pointing out, <laughs> burning spears against living armor is a. Uh, that's a pretty good way to deal with it. Yeah, it's a nice tool on top of what the Phoenix already has to offer. Uh, there was a little bit of a lack of tick damage aside from the fire sp spirits, which are pretty unreliable. So definitely a nice pick to round out the lineup here. If they're able, once again, as we said, to kind of eliminate that physical damage coming out from this sniper, sni uh, the Huskar is going to go absolutely ham. So it'll be interesting to see what happens. we got some connectivity issues once again uh, for SR here. Maybe Brax having little bit of problems oh i love this icon here in the <laughs> dire fountain the house yeah i thinking, i know pretty much everything they have is house you know cutties on the flags <laughs> and uh you know they must they just really like house i guess i don't know <laughs> apparently uh, summer's rift has something to do with house yeah i'm actually i was a pretty avid watcher of that show and i have no idea what it means so yeah never never if i don't like I, TV. I watch that show all the time to be honest that yeah. was like that, I, that show was my shit. Only thing I watch on television is the NFL, and I'm Canadian, so crucify me for it. CFL Ruffles. sucks. <laughs> CFL really sucks. <laughs> uh, but either way, uh, hopefully we can get these issues remedied and get into this one. Should be a fairly good matchup. Odds were about 65-35 last time I checked in uh, Summer's Rift. Uh, favor. I feel like that's about fair. Maybe a slight value bet for the Bra Brazilian squad. I think there's definitely a chance here for upset. You know, mm -hmm. if I'm a if I'm a betting man, you definitely know that this internet has not been stable the last couple of weeks. Yeah. Uh, it seems like a value bet for me. Mm -hmm. But um, I don't know. I mean, I, you know, I, I genuinely no, I don't think this is DDoS because I actually like, uh, you know, I I, talk, I talked to some people on his team. Yeah. And I did some investigating myself, <laughs> and could not seem to get the required information. Yeah, uh, that we, that you normally need to DDoS someone. Mm -hmm. So I think uh, I think he genuinely just has internet connectivity issues. But hopefully that's not an issue this game. I know the struggle being Canadian. I do know the internet <laughs> struggle. Yeah, you guys have some garbage tier. Holy, to be honest with you. Like I'd love Comcast. You guys flame Comcast. I would love that shit. Either way, <laughs> everyone flames Comcast. My only issue with it is is way too expensive. Yeah. Beyond that, like I have no issues with Comcast. I've had like two outages in like four years. Yeah, so it's just like it's pretty breaks, so I don't have a problem. Hop into so. this one. I'll take the Radiant side. Pain Gaming, the Brazilian squad, South America versus North America. 4DR, going to pick up his Luna in the safe lane. Baga, going to support him up on the Treant Protector that leaves soon in the mid lane on the Sniper. King RD on his Lion. And finally, Tavo on the Tidehunter. On the other side of things, for the Dire team, we've got Eamon, a.k.a. Jimmy, <laughs> on the Witch Doctor. Banana Slam. Jam is going to be on the Huskar Hero or Whitebeard. He's going to be on the Phoenix Brax, Axe, 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 Brax. <laughs> He's going to be on Star Spirit. I love that name. Uh, I'm happy to see it back. And last but not least, Bugatti420, uh, a.k.a. I think Miracle Chipmunk. Yeah, that is Miracle. Yeah. On the Sand King. Yeah, I got to love. Kinda, he kind of came out of nowhere, you know? Yeah, it really I did. Like I didn't. I had never heard of this player before he was on this team. 
I feel Maybe like that's just me being ignorant, but I feel like what North America is one of the scenes that kind of looks to develop and groom and accept new players more so than often. I feel like maybe notoriously so the Chinese scene is very reliant on their veterans. Either way, we're going to see an engagement towards the river. Impale goes out. Not going to do too much. Cask is going to bounce nicely between Baga and King RD, but they're splitting up their focus is the dire side right now. King RD burning down to Burning Spears. It will be fine. Burl Strike comes through onto Baga. Couple more right clicks should be enough. And Demon, classically so, gonna pick that up as the first blood for their side. Both bounty runes going to the Radiant, but not sure if it was worth the first blood. Yeah. Oh, it looks like King RD is... Oh, he is very, very close to dead. Brax was considering moving up there. Mm -hmm. But interesting, this Phoenix is, I think, just going to harass the mid lane a little bit. Yeah. Try to make a little bit of room for Brax because you get smashed in this lane pre-level 6 uh, as the Storm Spirit. Exactly. If you don't get a little bit of help, especially King RD no. looked like he was maybe going to stick around here. And uh, I, I think Brax just needs to be careful. I mean, basically, the goal of this lane, you just try to pull the creeps up the hill and make it so you can get mm. a couple missed chances so he hopefully doesn't destroy you uh and just try to get bare minimum cs you know he, he's actually he's doing pretty well for himself now but this lane is gonna get harder once there's levels in headshots oh, when there's more levels in shrapnel yeah Storm Spirit is not the speediest so he's he has to be really careful in this lane would not be surprised for him to see him die, to be honest. yeah already we're gonna see some shrapnel spam onto brax so he's gonna have yeah, right, definitely like this a, is the problem yeah definitely a tough time in this lane so far it's been bugatti 420 or chipmunk up in this off lane, all by his lonesome on the sand game. He's picked up level two and a half. He's gonna get wrapped here by Baga Sentry. Not gonna be dropped though. None in tow for the Radiant side. So Bugatti just looking to do to do to do up in this lane. King RD can rotate in with an impale and sentries. Bugatti could get caught out here. Yeah, looks like he knows that this could be an issue. Sentry is going to go down. Impale. Uh, I'm not sure he's gonna make it out of this one. It's gonna be close, huh? No Leech right. Seed mana available for Baga there. He dies for sure. If that is there, a little bit of overlap on the mini stun from the Lucent Beam with that Impale maybe would have been enough to kill him, but I don't feel like they had enough to chase him down regardless. Well, we'll see. He has to go all the way back. So, I mean, they've effectively done what they wanted to do. <laughs> maybe he even has more time out of lane, to be honest, while having to walk all the way back. So, uh... That's pretty much their goal. Just try to keep him out of here. But you have to know, as the Sand King, really all he's trying to do is get some levels, and yeah. then maybe he can take some ancient stacks. Although it looks like that's what Whitebeard is actually considering doing here. Yeah, little odd. The Phoenix super under leveled at this point, using the Icarus Dive to try and stack both camps, or at least farm them up for now. But has really suffered from having to harass that mid lane, not going to the off lane quite yet as well. So he will be able to stack up and then farm alongside this Sand King, who's already picked up his level three soon here. So maybe that's some recovery mechanic, but certainly an odd laning decision. Yeah, this is a little bit bizarre for me. Uh, he does get one stack, misses the other one. But there's a reg regardless, I mean, whoever takes this, whether it's him or the Sand King, there is a lot of farm for him to be had. And uh, Bugatti 420 actually dewards the existing Sentry Ward here. Oh, very clever move. Makes him waste the Impale, which just backs up, knows that he's going to do that. So good play so far from Bugatti 420, level three already. So that's really mission accomplished for him. Yeah, deep ward here giving him a lot of information as to King RD's rotations. And every time he comes in from stacking the jungle, Bugatti usually able to back up to his safety just fine. He's going to get blocked in, though. And he may be pincered. King RD looking to man up against this Sand King. Man King, two-man Burrow Strike. Cask is going to come through as well. King RD getting really low. One more right click is there from Chipmunk. And now they're going to aggress forward with the Maledict level one from Demon. But they won't have enough damage to bring down this Luna. He's going to run back yeah. into the welcoming they arms. They another stun. They don't, they don't have enough. Of his treant there. Yeah, not enough. Bottles come out for Brax XXX, but Tavo's gonna secure this top rune on the Tide Hunter, and Brax gonna be a little bit short of regen in this mid lane. He is pretty close to eclipsing that level six mark, though, so the ball lightning should be pretty damn useful for him thereafter. Brax has done well for himself in this mid lane. Pretty happy that he's managed to make it out. Okay, and it looks like the sniper is going to be in some trouble here. The Phoenix is coming over as well. Ian Pill, Bugatti 420 going to go down. Cracks as well. They have turned this around hugely. Looks like Hero's going to be in some trouble. What a turnaround gank. That gank, Jesus. The sniper... 
gets the kill. Easy. Sniper lives through that entire thing. Crazy. Actually, disaster for Summoner's Rift. Summoner's yeah. Rift. God damn it. <laughs> they stack up there and set up for the lion. And yeah, soon Tangoing up survives through that fire spirit. I was watching him hoping or expecting, I should say, him to tick down, but it wasn't actually the case. And big kill in terms of timing as well. Denies Brax from that level six and a big kill on the sniper. It would have been if they were able to get it but elsewhere three to two is your score pain gaming living armor and the salve gonna keep soon healthy in this mid lane as he just picks up that assassinate off that double kill and then picks up the phoenix on the back end man i can't believe that they didn't kill a sniper there that's mm -hmm. a that's brutal really nice rotation from the line he had a really great impale as they're coming up the hill and man that is just so rough banana slam Gemma, how is he doing in the top lane looks like he's got good farm yep. the tide appears to have been able to pretty much stay in the lane though the entire mm -hmm. time you might have to go back now but he is level four as well so he is pleased with how that's going and now bugatti 420 has returned to the jungle he's going to be farming up those big old stacks and i'm a little scared to see this phoenix this under level but... yeah i don't know where it leaves the phoenix at this point he doesn't really have yeah, anywhere like, to what go what does he really do without his like ulti you know mm -hmm. i mean Fire Spirits is very, very strong, I guess, against the Sniper. So maybe they just, maybe their goal is, you know, just use him as a vehicle to get the Sand King the Blink Dagger. And yeah. then I assume we'll see a little bit of a switch as maybe he'll start taking some farm. You can't really get too involved without the Supernova, though. Nice. Like, Phoenix is such a level dependent hero, and that's often why you'll see this Midas build. And just him not being able to rotate into lane now, being too under leveled, is really going to hamper his ability to transition into this mid game. So, it's going to be on Brax and the rest of his squad to kind of initiate and allow the Phoenix to soak up some of this XP and some of these engages. Once he gets the Supernova, I don't worry for him as much. He's going to do some stacking here. We'll get. Uh, a we'll have a double stack in the large camp, so along with the Sand King, should be able to farm that up, maybe find his level 3. Yeah, I think that's got to be the goal, right? You just switch your farmer from the Sand King to the Phoenix after mm -hmm. he gets the Blink Dagger. Uh, he's getting fairly close, so should be on track here for maybe eight 8.30, 9-minute Blink Dagger. Should be sufficient. Another good tool against the Sniper, who will be very, very, very dead if he gets blinked on and Burrow struck. Uh, BSJ armlet toggling with 2 HP there, straddling the boundary between life and death, but he'll be just fine, Jesus just some Christ. neutrals. Uh, Bugatti. Balls. Balls on this guy. <laughs> yeah. BSJ, no slouch for sure. He's going to give the lane over to the Phoenix for the time being. Tavo can't really yeah. punish him right now, not having a gush or... Oh, they're actually going to put some damage here. And if that first fire spirit hit, Tavo might have died. I think he's going to live, but it's going to be close. Oh, oh, he cancels his what? TP. Hello? <laughs> Was that like next level bait or did he just misclick? What happened? Uh, I guess he just Maybe realized. He's just like, I, I guess I'm fine. Yeah, when they backed off. Dude, that if they, they realized in... that he wasn't leaving, like, mm -hmm. they might have actually killed him. I don't think so, but. Mind games. Close. Brazilian mind oh, that's games. That's nuts. <laughs> <laughs> next level shit from Davo. He's going to stand up in lane. Finds that level 5 as well, so not too far off the Ravage. Meanwhile, 4DR farming pretty well. Treads and Aquila, 50 CS, just 6 below BSJ at this point. So Luna, mission accomplished thus, thus far. Uh, soon working towards what seems to be a casual Yasha at this point. Band of Elven Skin on top of the Aquila and Treads. Yeah, that sounds about right. I actually really like the Aquila. I mean, I say this every, I feel like I say this every time I cast, but this item is just so efficient. It like, is. You get so much damage out of it, it's really cheap, it gives you some mana regen, which is pretty useful on the hero like Luna when you want to use your Q to spam heroes out of lane. Mm -hmm. It's just an awesome item on the on these edgy heroes. Very, very cost effective indeed. Probably the only... I mean, you get 18 damage, that's sick. Yeah, I think the only more cost effective item in the game right now, which is sure to be nerfed next patch, is Mask of Madness, but Aquila is yeah, certainly... Item is good. We've seen PLs build it almost every game now that PL is yeah, a little bit think, reworked. You know, I think the problem with Granat is not Juggernaut. I think it's Mask of Madness. Mm -hmm. That item is so busted. Yeah, definitely. Like, I mean, you watch, like, I think, uh, you know, like a perfect example is when you watch EG play that hero. I mean, Fear just gets a Mask of Madness, like AFK jungles for 10 minutes, has more farm than like AMs and shit. It's mm -hmm. so gross. That item's broken. Yeah, it synergizes way too well with the Jug at this point. So, I mean, look for, at the very least, a cost increase. Either way, we're going to see a Nature's Guys up onto King RD. He's going to do some scouting with the help of his Radiant Vision here on the cliff. And he may find BSJ. No finger available. Not that it matters with the Berserker's Blood. The Armlet Toggle, very risky from BSJ here. King RD scouting him out. Has no support quite yet. He's actually going to pop himself here. Runs away from the cheese. And now BSJ seeing him. He's going to try and TP away. 
BSJ gonna life break. Not gonna get Close. much done though, but one more right click and maybe that's enough with the burning spears for the kill. Yeah, that's pretty close. BSJ farming very effectively here, checking out the net worth. He is uh, doing pretty well. Can't really compare to the sniper, who it seems to just be getting anything he wants. 64 CS, mm -hmm. two kills, has an Aquila as well. Yeah, he's completed up that Yasha, soon has as well. So doing very well on the sniper. Taking a look at the net worth, he's topping it off. Top lane, they are going to take down Tavo for the first time. Bugatti rotating in just with that level 4 Burl Strike. No points in the epicenter, but the death word was utilized and start spamming t tours in chats fucking cameras terrible <laughs> uh interesting they i'm i mean the problem here is tidehunter got level six right like he now has yeah. his ultimate he's mission accomplished the phoenix is getting levels pretty well now still has like no farm but it's kind of just rotating around to wherever there's not a hero taking up the xp mm -hmm. working towards that level six actually very very close now so summer's rift are doing a good job Spreading around the love, making sure that Phoenix can get to level six. Well, at the time these big fights start starting, uh, the Saint King does have the Blink Dagger, and he is just looking to initiate, I think, at this point, but not able to find anything quite yet. Yeah, Arcane Boots purchased up as well by Tavo just before dying, so he didn't really lose any gold, but they definitely need to queue up some aggression on this tide. There's already a triple stack of Ancients prepared for him, and what, as you mentioned, the Blink Dagger being there for Bugatti 420 really means that they have an innate initiation advantage at this point. Regen Rune was scouted out mid by Soon on Braxis Storm Spirit, so he's backed off to the jungle, and he's going to farm up a quad stack as well. For himself along with king rd so sniper really has not been Whoa, hindered at miss? all honestly this huskar is like he's abusing the crap out of this arm like <laughs> he's been walking around with like 200 hp for the longest time i mean he knows that if he just keeps farming in these safe areas uh there's not really anything that they can do to him like I'll take they, he's the lot of options here so with all of the magic resistance he does have built in, like, Sniper maybe could kill him if he wanders over, but, I mean, they know that the Sniper just wants to get as much CS as possible, so he's not going to be, like, ganking. So he just has, like, free roam to do whatever he wants. Yeah, it's definitely smart play from him. It gives the lane over to some of these underleveled heroes as well. Brax zipping around with this regen rune. Not going to find much in the way of heroes quite yet. Uh, tier 1 is being aggressed upon by mid, or uh, in mid by pain. And uh, they are going to back off promptly here after. Smoke, though, from two heroes. That's Soon and King RD. They're going to go towards the top lane where they may find out Demon. And Jimmy, a little bit low on this mana is, at this point. All they get is this Wish Doctor. This is not worth it, I mm -hmm. don't think. The sniper, like, rotating out of lane for this long. It's fairly obvious, I think, as well. They see now that he's not uh, in the Ancients. Yeah, Jimmy knows that they're up here. And if they don't even get this kill, wow, what a waste. Yeah, that's, not quite enough really vision in nighttime to see him TPing out there. And maybe they get a tier 1 off this, but the rotations are definitely possible from the dire side. Four TPs available, Hero or Whitebeard, the yeah. only one without a TP. They know he's gone now. That's soul crushing. Let's not be happy. And just a couple of wasted shrapnel charges for good measure as well. Rough. Tier 1? Yeah, tier one gonna be. I mean, they, get the, they might get the tower out of yeah. it, but whatever. I mean, that's gonna happen eventually, right? Say demon's still alive. They don't get the kill. Sniper has wasted a ton of his time. Mm -hmm. So, definitely yeah. a net win there for Summer's Rift. Yeah, and Tavo also wasting a little bit of farm that he would have had if the other hero's not rotating into the lane. So that's gonna slow his blink dagger down. Already 13 and a half minutes, and for the time that the tide had in lane. Feels like he should be a little bit closer to this blink, but still pretty far away. Now the dire or the radiant agents have been warded up. BSJ though. Ravage goes off. BSJ is gonna go down. There's a great burrow strike. Brax comes in. Death ward goes down.